Hi there, and welcome to Tech Power. The LG G5 doesn't have two cameras, it has three cameras, and of course, there are many features and settings that accompany three cameras. So, I wanted to go through these settings and features. So, we have two cameras on the back one 16 megapixel standard lens and one 8 megapixel wide angle lens, 135 degrees of field of view, and then we have an 8 megapixel front facing camera. We can switch between the two back cameras with on screen controls in the camera app. It's very simple, just press the different buttons and it switches between the different lenses. And we can obviously see how much wider the angle gets with the wide angle lens. So let's start go through the settings. We first see a help button, that is a very neat feature, because there we can see an introduction to all the camera features, taking photos and videos, switching between cameras, gesture shot, auto shot, interval shot, panorama, snap video, multi view recording, pop out picture, slow motion and time lapse, film effects, steady recording, cheese shutter, quick share, manual camera mode, and save as raw. The first actual setting is the grid. We can set it to on or off, and when set to on, we get white grid lens on the screen. It can help us frame in the photo we're taking. Next setting is OIS or optical image stabilization. When turned on, it helps us take videos that are not shaky, and also helps us take photos in low light without getting them blurry. Then we have the cheese shutter setting. It's not cheese like parmesan cheese, it's cheese when you're smiling for a photo. We can set the cheese shutter to on or off. You can take a photo by just saying smile, cheese, LG. Then of course we have a timer function. We have three settings. We have the timer off. We can set the timer to three seconds. And then we can set the timer to 10 seconds. Then we have some photo filters, which LG wants to call films. So we have nine films. These filters are kind of similar to what we can get on Instagram and from other photo apps. And here are three examples. Next up is HDR, high dynamic range. When HDR is turned on, the camera tries to brighten up dark parts of the picture and darken areas that are too bright. But when it's turned off, it just shoots the photo normally. And then we have the auto HDR. Then the camera decides for itself if HDR is needed or not. Then we have the different resolutions, both for photo and video. We have the 16 by 9 ratio, which gives us 16 megapixel photos. We have the 4 by 3 ratio, which gives us 12 megapixel photos. Then we have the Instagram ratio, 1 by 1, which gives us only 8.9 megapixel photos. For the video resolutions, on the other hand, we have HD, which is 720p, we have Full HD, which is 1080p, and then we have UHD, which is 4K. And when we are recording 4K video, we are limited to a 5 minute video only. But when recording 1080p or 720p, there is no limit to the length of the video, except for the memory on the phone. So now we covered the settings, let's see the different modes the camera offers. So while testing out the settings, we've been using the auto mode, which is just the normal mode. Then we have the panorama, which lets us take panorama photos of course, but it only seems to be working in portrait mode, not landscape. Then we have a feature called snap. This feature lets us take 3 second videos, or snaps, for up to a total of 60 second video, or we can hold down the rec button for the whole 60 seconds. When taking these 3 second snaps, in the end they're all combined into one video. Then we have the multi-view recording. Here we can take video or photos using all three cameras in a row, but not simultaneously, just one by one, and each clip is three seconds. In the end, the video is combined into one video where we can see all three videos at once. Then we have a feature called pop-out. Here we take a photo or a video and the photo is popped out in the frame and the background is the same frame but larger. Then we can have add effects on the background, for example fisheye, black and white, wignette or lens blur. 
For example, in this photo, we have a rectangle with a lens blur. And we can have big net and black and white. And we can choose to have a fish eye in the background. Then we can also choose different frames. Rectangle, circle, sextant, wide angle or square. For example, here we have a circle with a lens blur background. We can also have a wide angle or long rectangle and a lens blur. Then we can take time-lapse photos. Here photos are taken on interval and they're combined into a video. Actually it just seems to be a sped up video. And this time-lapse was taken with 15 times speed. But we can choose to take the time-lapse in different speeds. Time times, 15 times, 30 times, 60 times fast. The camera offers slow-mo feature. It takes video in 720p, 120 frames per second. The slow-mo video here is in 1 8th of the speed. But after we've taken the slow-mo video, we can change the speed to one-fourth of the speed, or half the speed, or simply normal speed. But we can't choose which portion of the video is played back in slow motion. Then we of course can switch between the front and the back camera. And we can even use the display as a flash when using the front camera. And then of course we have flash for the main camera. We can choose to have it off, on, or auto, where the camera chooses for itself if the flash is needed or not. We have some more modes, that is viewfinder modes. We've been using the auto mode, which is the normal viewfinder mode and the default one. Then we have the simple mode, where we can only take photos and we have no on-screen controls except switching between the standard lens and the wide-angle lens. We just have to use the volume up and down buttons to take the photos. And then we have the manual mode. Unfortunately, this mode is only for photos. Here we have a lot of manual settings. We have AEL, which stands for Auto Exposure Lock, and we can set that to on or off. When it's set to on, we can lock a certain exposure in the photo. We have shutter speed, which we can use to change how much light gets into the sensor, and we can simply slide between different shutter speeds. Then we have ISO. The ISO is the sensitivity of the image sensor to light. So setting the ISO depends on the amount of light we have in the scene we're photographing. The more light you have to work with, the lower you can set your ISO. And as with the shutter speed, we can simply slide between the different ISO modes. Then we have the exposure control, where we can also slide up between different levels. Then we have manual focus. This one is very neat. And here we can also slide up and down to get the desired focus. Next up is white balance. And here we also get a slider to slide to the appropriate white balance. At the bottom of the viewfinder, we have real-time info of all the settings. Aperture, ISO, white balance, exposure level, graph, and more. And when using the manual mode, we get even more settings. We can choose RAW JPG. With this setting, the photo is minimally compressed and there is no image processing made on the photo. We have one new flash mode with an R. It's called Rear Curtain Sync. The flash will fire at the end of the exposure and moving objects will then show their motion trail. Then we can show and hide the exposure level graph I talked about earlier. And then we have a level indicator, or angle indicator, so we can see when the photo is properly leveled. And then of course we have all the settings that were included in the auto viewfinder mode. But can we zoom on the camera? <laughs> yes, of course. We can use our fingers to pinch to zoom in and out, but we can also drag up and down the zoom slider. When zooming far out, the phone will automatically switch to the wide angle lens camera, and switch back to the standard camera when zooming in again. When taking video, that is when we are in active video mode, we don't have many options. We can turn the flash on or off. We can switch between the normal and wide angle lens while recording. And we can zoom in and out. And we can take still photos while recording. And that's it. No extra controls while taking video. At least we want to have exposure control. But how about the features for the front-facing camera? Yes, we get some extra features for the front-facing camera. We have gesture control. That means we can make a fist to take a photo in three seconds. And if you make two fists in a row, the camera takes four photos in a row after three seconds.
And then we have a face smoothing feature. It's a smoothing effect that can remove pimples and freckles. Here we have no smoothing. And here we have max smoothing. You can see the difference. Then we have a selfie horizontal flip. So we can let the camera horizontally flip the photo when taken with the selfie camera. So the first one is with flip. And the second one is without. Then we have a feature called Auto Shirt. This is a face detection feature. So when the camera detects the face, it takes a photo. And one last neat feature is Quick Share. So when we've taken a photo or video, we can directly share it on social media, such as Facebook, directly from the camera. And we can also slide up here from the bottom to get more share options, and even click the three dots to get even more share options. So this was my overview of the settings and features of the LG D5 cameras. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share. See you in my next video.